I'm Tassin. Make some noise for Yasha, everybody. Uh, shout out to Mad Cats Comedy and for Mickey for having me. Make some noise for them too as well. Yeah. Make some noise for yourselves. Yeah, okay. Well, that's okay. You don't have to. How's everybody doing tonight? Good guy. That's good energy. That's the kind of energy I'm going to bring tonight. I'm pretty tired, so that's okay. Uh, my name's Tassin. This is my 11th show ever. Let me just move this out the way. I always forget to do that. This is my 11th show ever, so congratulations, you've made it to my top 11 best shows. <laughs> uh, I recently got into stand-up comedy and I was talking to my friend, I'm like, hey, I'm doing stand-up. She's like, really? I hate stand-up. I could never fucking do it. I'm like, it's stand-up. Anybody could do it. You just go up there and you stand up. She's like, ugh, oh, fuck you, Tyson. And just rolls away in her wheelchair. <laughs> Okay, okay, what's going on? I didn't realize how able to stand up was. Um, so I came to Dubai about 10 days ago. Uh, one of my friends helped me book this show. And I wrote a bunch of material, and then they told me I couldn't talk about like 50% of it. So we're gonna have to freestyle this, go off the top a little bit. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, cool, cool, cool. Uh, so I'm from Canada which is kind of like being from America, uh, but with manners. <laughs> um, which doesn't make us actually better, it just makes us more tolerable. Uh, like I have two cousins from America here, uh, you can t stand them for about 30 minutes, me 35. You know, after that it's just like, fuck, go back to North America. Um, I'm also from Toronto, uh, you guys familiar with Toronto? Today, yeah. just, in, just in case I get lost. You know? uh, uh, Drake's from Toronto, which is pretty cool. You guys know Drake? Yeah. Yeah, he's a do right and kill everything. Started from the bottom. Me and Drake are really good friends, actually. Uh, he just doesn't know it yet. But, uh, <laughs> Toronto people love Drake, especially Toronto mans. Toronto mans love Drake. I'm a Toronto man, so I love Drake. And the average Toronto man actually pays more for a Drake sex tape than the average Toronto woman, which is like, you know. Which is kind of cool because Drake gets that much male support. Uh, I grew up in Scarborough, which is a little suburb in Toronto. Uh, my whole life, people told me that it was like a hood, like a ghetto. But I didn't believe it, you know what I mean? Like, uh, I didn't feel like it was a hood or, or any kind of ghetto. Like, my parents had two cars, you know, on, our, on the front of our driveway growing up. And only one ever got stolen. You know what I'm saying? That's a considerate carjack, you know what I mean? Those are considerate carjackers. You know, they came to my house like, and there's Lenny in the corner who's been staking on my house for like three days. Guys, this is a two-person household. They got like three kids. Between the two of them, they're working like four jobs. Is there any way we can cut them some slack? And the leader of the leader of the stealing brigade is like, all right, Lenny's right, guys. Lenny's right. We're gonna take the sedan, leave them with the SUV. That shit's got trunk space like crazy. It'll be great for the family. And that's some considerate carjacks. So Scarborough's like hood adjacent. Uh, I grew up with a lot of <laughs> I grew up with a lot of black people. Uh, so uh, when I was younger, they gave me the permission to say the N word, which I did. Uh, but when I got older, I became more educated. Uh, you know what I mean? I learned about the history of the N word, the history of slavery. So uh, you know, my friends would all be like, Tassin, do you know what black people went through? Four hundred years of slavery. You know, another. 50 years of oppression, they still can't do anything. So now I accommodate black people like to no avail. You know, I'm really accommodating of black people. Like I only wear polyester around my black friends. <laughs> so I feel like cotton is too triggered, you know what I'm saying? Um, that's right. I'm just gonna look here so. Um, rap music is almost problematic. You know, all it's missing is an E. <laughs> Alright, I'll let that sink in for a bit. Um, so I grew up with two parents. <laughs> took a little bit of a time. That's a joke. I grew up with two parents, um, uh, and apparently that was a blessing. Uh, I tell you, it wasn't a blessing when they were beating my ass. Uh, I really wish I had one in those times. Like my mom would start get ready to beat my ass. She'd take off her earring, she'd give it to my dad. My dad would put it on. They'd fuse together <laughs> like fucking Gogeta from Dragon Ball Z. And they would beat me like, not Gogeta, but like Durga. You know the, the Hindu god with many arms? That shit was like a choreographed dance, man. They'd beat my ass. My mom's cooking. You know, she's cooking curry in the pot. And suddenly I don't know. It's crazy, you know what I mean? It was tough uh, growing up with two parents. 
Uh, <laughs> also, uh, I have uh, I have two therapists as well, plural. Uh, I grew up playing team sports and double teams were always a good defensive strategy. Uh, I call my therapists mom and dad. Uh, they're not actually my parents, but my therapists recommend I uh, start developing positive relationships with these words. You know what I mean? Uh, so I call my therapist mom and dad, and they told me, Tassin, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta do something in terms of public discourse, otherwise. You know, you're gonna go crazy. So it's either stand up or protesting. And uh, I don't, I'm privileged enough where I don't have to care about anything enough to have to protest about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I used to be an anti vaxxer, uh, but then I got my first dose and then they stopped letting you to the parties. Uh, which, is, which is fucking bullshit. You know what I mean? I didn't like that. So uh, I got my second dose. Uh, I didn't realize how privileged I was as a Canadian until I came to Dubai. Um, when I got to Dubai, when I was at the airport, nobody asked me for a proof of vaccine, nobody asked me for a COVID test, nobody asked me for anything. They just trusted my word. You know what I mean? I wasn't used to that kind of, I grew up in Scarborough, you know, I'm not used to people trusting what I have to say. Um, I just recently got out of a relationship. Uh, I used to date a Palestinian woman. Uh, and you know, dating a Palestinian woman, that comes with a lot of, you know, conflict. Um, <laughs> yeah, like it was tough. Like. If you the more, the more you date a Palestinian woman, you're constantly berated by this conflict information. You know, like I know everything about the Palestine-Israel conflict. That's my minute time, isn't it? Um, no, no, it was a minute ago. Oh, it was a minute ago. Okay, so uh, if you, I can't finish that joke. I'm so sorry. But we broke up, and now I just hope Israel wins. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> uh, make some noise. Uh, everybody, put your hands together. Make some noise for your headliner tonight. But T-Bone, make some noise for T-Bone. How is everybody doing tonight? Yeah. Yeah. A little more energy at the last time we go. The, 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 the,